Repeat the. Um, okay. Not yet. Not yet. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Everybody ready? to the black room this is your host black ice i have a guest here isaiah hill how you doing man i'm doing well good 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 man uh we just enjoy your performance these days in the other studio man and um 
Uh, we had a lot of dope footage, actually. Um, when we record this show, we usually do the we do the performance last, so we did it all the way around. So it's kind of refreshing. So I'm kind of hyped for the interview now, man. To you know, hearing the music and and um and we were jamming out for like the past hour already, I guess you can say. So oh, yeah. uh, some good stuff, man. So yeah, so yo, tell me, so how do you even get into music in the first place? I love telling the story. Yeah. So um, naturally a keys player. So I started. A lot of musicians they start on other instruments. A lot of uh, musicians start on on drums. They start like banging on pots and pans and like playing in church or whatever. But like I started on the instrument that I'm gonna end up on. So my granddad bought me a bike and my sister a keyboard. So I was about five, my sister was at the time probably eight years old. So we had this whole sibling rivalry, like, no, nah, I'm not about to let you have a better gift. <laughs> so I'm about to take this bike from you. Wow. And I and she took no, I I took the keyboard from her. She took the bike from me. Yeah. So that's how I started. And Debo. Then, like Debo, your oh, own yeah. sister. All day long. Wow. All day long. Like, I did not care. I didn't even know what Friday was. Back wow. <laughs> but I straight Debo. And then, like, you know, it was like a small Casio, so uh-huh. it came with programmable sound. So I like, hit a button, it played the song for me. So I started, you know, playing around with Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So I started playing by ear. Yeah. And that turned into hearing songs on the radio, like, you know, playing the covers, playing the John Legends, playing the Alicia Keys. And then, yeah, so I'm, I'm really uh, self taught. Just playing by ear. I gotta know now, man. It's like what? Uh, what does your sister do now? Like, is, is she a professional bike <laughs> bike rider? <laughs> that would be dope if she's like a bitch. She doesn't get yeah. That'll be good. But nah, she uh, she works in the the apartment leasing uh, industry. Okay, she's also a very talented dancer. Okay, yeah. So she does hip hop, uh, liturgical, like freestyle. So like. Between me and her, we, we're like the musical ones. Okay. Our family. Like, no one else does music in our family. Yeah. I have no idea where it came from. Wow. My granddad used to sing in church back in the day. Like, you know, he was a deacon, so he used to sing. You know, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Back yeah. in the, <laughs> the church. You know? So that's probably where it came from. But yeah, that, that's what she's doing. Wow. She so probably wondered, like, man, I, I could have been a dope keys player if my brother had took my keyboard. <laughs> she, I feel like she never thinks that. <laughs> she probably never thinks that, yeah. Good man, but at such a young age, man, you already had played with uh, uh, Chrisette Michelle and Indy Ari already, man. So, how was that experience for you? At such an early age, I didn't know what I was signing myself up for. Yeah, because I played with Chrisette Michelle around age fourteen, and there was a oh. spot um, on North Harrison. Right here in Atlanta, it was a North, North Harrison Road called Club Echelon. Or Echelon, yeah, oh Remember man, that? yes, Echelon without reading, exactly, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So imagine the fourteen-year-old Isaiah just wandering, like lugging a big this? eighty-eight key <laughs> keyboard through the club, prime time play at like ten o'clock in the, uh, at night. And I, yeah, I didn't know the magnitude of what it was until a few years later, and I realized who she actually was and like yeah. what she was about. I'm like now, I'm such a huge fan of her, like. I play her music all the time. So how you get that gig as being 14 years old, though? Yeah. That's all I want to know. Yeah. I got to credit all that to my dad. Okay. You I got to credit that to my dad. He's 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 the road dog. He, so he's the reason I have a lot of opportunities that I have right now. He really pushed me out into the scene. So when I was younger, like around age 13, 14, he had this big white van because he did after school programs. So mm-hmm. he would like, you know, carry the kids from the school to whatever uh, program they needed to go to. So when um at the end of the day, we would just put my keyboard in the car and we would like go to different venues. We went to the Omni Hotel one time. I'll never forget this. I dressed up, put on a nice little tie, you know, polished my <laughs> shoes off a little bit. You know, I, I look good. So my dad went in first to the hotel and he was like, yeah, so so the talent is here. The the entertainment is here. And then they were like, oh, I didn't even know we had entertainment. And then they saw us, you know, look professional. So we, we just came in. I sat at my keyboard, played. So that's really the magnitude of our relationship. Like, wow. He really... Believes in me that much to you know, wow. push me out there. You know, that's that dope. Thing. You just act like you belong and you just ran with it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's dope. Exactly. Uh, now, how was it with Indy Ari? You know, did you do the same thing? Were you like 14 in the club with Indy Ari? Yeah, no. Nah, okay. Nah. <laughs> Indy Ari, that, that was a cool situation. I did a gig uh, up in Martha's Vineyard and I didn't even know India was going to show up. Yeah. So um, I forget who I was playing with actually. It was somebody from Berkeley from my college. And we went up there, and India came in like towards the latter half of our performance. Mm-hmm. And then she she actually didn't end up singing, but she was speaking. She was like encouraging the artist that was on stage. 
and that was just like a company behind her and then we like you know chatted up took some pictures like you know oh, that's what's she up. encouraged me you know I told her how big of a fan I was without being too big of a fan right was like, you know, <laughs> that was a cool little situation man so you uh, you grew up here right I did born and raised in Stone Mountain Jersey. and so you went all the way out to Berkeley for school yes sir now, how was that like that's the movie I, you're growing into a man going across you know leaving right. home right like, I mean, it, it, I'm not going to say it was difficult, but it was definitely out of the norm because I had opportunities to go to school like in Tennessee and in Florida where a lot of my friends were going, but I wanted something different for myself. Mm-hmm. So um, it wasn't even too big of a culture shock. The fact that there were 90 different countries represented in that one school, wow. it didn't really shock me that much because I grew up, um, you know, with all different types of backgrounds, different races, ethnicities. So like, I was cool with like a lot of different people and I understood a lot of different cultures as well. It was more of like a people shock, like seeing so many different personalities. Yeah. The Dylan musicians, they're like, it's such a huge, uh, you know, there's a broad just spectrum of like personalities with Dylan musicians. Yeah. Like the laid back ones, you got the, you know, the extra ones the, <laughs> and everything in between. So like, it was like more of a people shock than anything. But I learned so much being there. I learned a lot. That's so cool. it, was, it was a good experience. So not only you play piano, you also produce and you engineer as well. So... Throughout the whole process of making music, what part of it did you enjoy the most? I enjoy recording voice memos on my phone and bouncing it to, <laughs> to whatever program I'm using. Like, just hearing that raw, uncut, like, you know, in the moment uh, recording. Yeah. I love that the most. Because how I work is, like, I record an idea or whatever. I sit down on my piano, record the idea, play it, bounce it to uh, Logic. That's a program that I work in. And, like, put my drums on top of that, put more chords on top of that. And I just like hearing that transition from that raw to the, you know, the, the polished thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's the part I like the most. Not really the post, not the mixing and the mastering, but that it, that right in the beginning. that like Yeah, that, the that raw part. idea and just processing it to bring it to reality, I guess. Exactly. I love that part too. Exactly. Yeah. That's what's up. All right, so what's some of your current favorite artists that you listen to right now? Oh, man. There's this guy out of St. Louis. His name is Smino. He's a rapper. Okay. Man, he, he's really dope. Um, He's like a cross between like Andre 3000. He's like the Norse answer for Andre 3000. Wow. And it's, it's awesome. His beats are crazy. His band is dope. So, uh, Smino is one of the guys I, I really uh, dig checking out. Robert Glasper, of course. I yeah. yeah. I just heard the remix of the Black Radio 2, I think. Yeah. I was like, I didn't even know it existed. It just popped up on my Spotify like. Oh, this is dope. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. You can expect nothing but dopeness from Robert Glasper. Yeah. So shout out to Robert Glasper. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Derek Hodge, which is a bass player. He okay. has his own solo project. Two projects out right now. And shout out to Chris Dave. He um he's a drummer. Plays for Robert okay. Glasper a lot. Um, they all have their solo projects. So those three dudes, that's like, that's like you know a really dope trio for me. I model um a lot of my sound from from that trio. I just okay. like the the rawness and that grittiness that they have. Like they're not even worried about being perfect. Yeah. They're like we're about to trust that we have like dopeness inside of us and hopefully it's going to come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Glasper, Chris Dave, um I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw Chris Dave up. Yeah. Yeah, he said Smino. Smino. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And on on the R&B tip, um on the R&B tip, I really dig like uh I'm really digging like uh, Usher right now. Really, I just recently <laughs> uh, discovered his live album. Okay, he uh, did like an album. I think it was in the '90s, and it's called I think Usher Live or something. And yo, it's crazy. Wow, it's crazy. The band is going in. Usher's going in. Like that was him in his prime. Okay, that was like right before you recorded like Confessions. Oh, okay, so, yeah, right before that whole era. That, that whole era, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what do you think about the current state of jazz right now, like from your perspective? I, mean, I think it's I think it's doing pretty well. Okay. I think it's doing pretty well. Um I mean it's not it used to be the pop music back in the day. Yeah. It used to be you can turn on the radio and all you would hear is jazz. You know, I mean you would go out to clubs and you hear jazz. Like it was just natural and just normal for you to go out and hear some dope jazz. Right. You know. Um but now it's it's a little more it's a little more exclusive now, I think. Um now do I Agree with how exclusive it is? Not really. I feel like people like Glasper, people like um, Snarky Puppy, uh, and groups like Funky Knuckles and like fusion bands like this. They're doing a good job of making jazz more accessible because mm-hmm. they're bringing in like mainstream people and like you know fusing with jazz. So you know it appeals to more people than it usually would. 
And I'm all for that. Like, just putting different people together that wouldn't really have a chance to play. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm all down for, like, bringing in, like, a blues guitar player. Yeah. And then, you know, bringing in, you know, a cat that just plays nothing but hip-hop. Yeah. You know, bringing me that, like, likes playing R&B and soul music and just see what happens. Right. And just hear what that fusion sounds like. And jazz, to me, is improvisation. So if you're imp- improvising, mm-hmm. that's jazz. It doesn't matter if you're freestyling. That's jazz. Yeah. If I go up to the keyboard and, like, hit random notes while I'm looking at you, that's jazz because I just made it up on the spot. Right. And it's going to go away after I play it. So, that's I, th- I think jazz is doing pretty well right now. And speaking of fusion and, and other genres, so I mean, how you feel about the sound of hip hop in today's you know industry? Oh man, good old hip hop. <laughs> good old hip hop. Um, it's different. <laughs> it's different than, than what it used to be. I mean, anyone with ears can know that if you listen to like most deaf and you listen to you know Migos, you you feel differently. You know what I mean? Like. Definitely. Um, it, it serves it just serves a different purpose. I feel like rap back in the day just served a different purpose than it does now. Yeah. Like hip hop and rap kinda serves more of a club function and and it makes you just turn up a little more than what it used to back in the day. Because I feel like back in the day, and I can only speak from, you know, my living experience. Right. I was born in ninety six. So <laughs> right. you know, but my mom is from New York, so she was playing like Run DMC, Slick mm-hmm. Rick, like all the old school New York cats like in the house, so it was just more like communitive. It was like more of a community thing. I think. Um, I think is. Um, I think people have more styles then, like you know, because like the '90s era is my era of, of hip hop, mm-hmm. and uh, I think it's so cool. Like you turn the radio today, I don't know who's rapping. Like had the people sound alike to me, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, but I feel like in the '90s, like you had Busta Rhymes his own style. One J had another style. Rayman had another style. Met the man. Like the Wu Tang had a whole another style. Mm-hmm. Outkast, the Dunn family. Like exactly. there's so many different styles mm-hmm. at one time. Like, like you were frowned upon to sound like somebody else. Exactly. You know I mean? It was whack back in the day. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I was like, and I yeah. love that. And and I guess at the time I I couldn't appreciate it. Like you know, being younger. But now it's like, dang man, like everybody had a completely different sound. So whatever move you in, I can find somebody or I find a particular sound. You know what I mean? So exactly. it's like. Man, but I feel like we don't have that now, yeah. and um, and I think the I think the other part of it too is um, like you said, uh, it's it's been so commercialized, and um, you really don't have artist artist development anymore, mm-hmm. and um, I think the term hip hop into uh, fast food, I think that's the best way to describe it. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, it maybe whatever is a hit right now, would these people be on tour ten years later off that same song? Exactly. I mean, like. And um and somebody made up a good point. I don't know where I heard this from, but it was like Lauren Hill still touring off an album she dropped twenty years ago. You know what I mean? Like it's a classic. Yeah, you know what I mean? But that's crazy. She wanted to drop one complete album. I mean, of course unplugged and other stuff, man, but one album and she's still touring off that one album exactly. twenty years later. Like that's unheard of, you know. It is unheard of. So it's like, man, like so today's artists would well, they have the same opportunity and I don't see it. You know, mm-hmm. so I don't see like, it either because I feel like people are just concerned with, with making that quick little buck, getting that fifteen seconds of fame. Yeah, you know, what I mean, that's more important than like having longevity. I feel like in, in the hip hop community. Yeah, but you do have you do have some saviors. You got the Kendricks, you got the Logics, you yeah, know, you got the the J Coles, which I feel like they're gonna make some classics. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like classics just stand the test of time because they're relatable. I feel like music nowadays isn't gonna be relatable like twenty thirty years from now. So tell us, uh, you, you know, upcoming projects you got going on. Uh, there is. I have. I have something coming up. Um, I'm in the recording process right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's still in this. Um, in, in the baby stages. So you know, we still learning how to walk. Okay, that's but, what's up. But um, you know, I have. I have a lot of ideas in my head. So um, I'm recording stuff every day. Like uh, I live with a really dope musician. His name is Josh. Like he's my drummer brother. Met him in school. Like he's really dope. So between me and him, we bounce off ideas all the time. Mm-hmm. And like I just surround myself with like really cool people. So like I'm always inspired. So I always have my phone out like doing voice memos. Okay. So like I'm still like in the embryonic stage of like recording, but I'm gonna release an album like uh next year. Okay. All right, and to tell people how they can find you. Uh you can find me on Facebook, Instagram. Facebook is Isaiah Hill. Instagram is Isaiah Malik underscore music. Also on SoundCloud, Isaiah Hill, type it in. It'll come up. I have a few tracks up there. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, I sure appreciate you coming through, uh, Isaiah. I enjoyed you. The dope music and everything, man. And best of luck with everything, bro. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me.